G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard, thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show, and yes, if you are a long-term viewer of my channel, the five of you, you will know that I love nothing more than a close game of rugby finishing on a big fucking scrum penalty, okay? 2021 Lions to our Springboks won a penalty to win the third test from the scrum and winning the series, and... Still etched fresh in all of our memories, the Rugby World Cup semi-final, Vincent Koch was specially added into the 23 to go off the bench to win a scrum penalty for the Springboks, and he did it right in front of Mr. Ben O'Keefe, the referee in tonight's game between the Reds and Brumbies. Yes! So, we got a little bit of story before I go on, to, on a rant and complain about his atrocious decisions in the scrummaging. All right, story time. So after that scrum, the Ben O'Keefe decision to give the scrum penalty to the Springboks in that infamous Rugby World Cup semi-final, famous Rugby World Cup semi-final, depends which side of the, the globe you're on, uh, his decision was two things that led to the penalty to the Springboks. One, he decided that Ellis Genge, who was the loose air prop against Vincent Koch, went on his knee first. And he said, number two, Vincent, uh, Ellis Genge was boring in, going in on an angle into Vincent Koch. Now, a lot of people said that Vincent Koch was also boring in to the hooker, to Jamie George, I think it was. And why wasn't he penalized for boring in? Why was Ellis Genge penalized for boring in, right? So, two things. So after this, this, this scrum, there were lots of people, you know, discussing the decision including Mr. Nigel Owens. Uh, Nigel Owens had actually come out and sort of criticized Ben O'Keefe's decisions a little bit. Ben O'Keefe said, knee to the ground first, then boring in. Nigel Owens said that ben, if knee to the ground was the penalty, then he should have called the penalty right there and there when the knee to the ground. Boring in part should not have been a decision. But if Ben O'Keefe decided that Need to the ground and then allow the game to play it on, then it comes down to the decision on the boring in. So that if he allowed it to play on, then he kind of he cannot go back and like add it up as a you know two penalties. He has to let the play continue. That's the that's basically that's literally what uh, Nigel Owens was explaining. And Nigel Owens said that what happened on the field there when both props were boring in, it was a difficult decision to call which side was at fault. So, even though I thought Ben O'Keefe made the right decision, because in the case where both props are boring in, and he can't tell which one is at fault, the prop that's going forward gets the penalty, which was Vincent Koch. But Nigel Owens was like, that's a bit of 50-50. So I felt like maybe after that match, Ben O'Keefe has become more careful when it comes to deciding on scrum penalties. And it was very evident in this game that he's very reluctant to call for penalties unless he's absolute, unless he is absolutely sure of it. And I, I'm, and I feel like it is the result of that Rugby World Cup semi-final uh, and some of the criticism that he received from that scrum penalty given to Vincent Koch. Yeah, so I was actually going to, like I said just before, I was actually going to make a rant about this how the Reds did not get a penalty in the last minute of the game, which could have won the Reds the game if that penalty had been issued in the scrum. The Bromby scrum was going backwards, completely, you know, uprooted, essentially. And the referee allowed the ball to go out and play it on. I thought, you know, most of the referees would have called out a penalty before the ball even went out. But the referee allowed time for the ball to go out and did not issue a penalty that could have won the Reds of the game. So I was going to do a rant, but... I went back and watched some replays and watched some of the scrum calls Ben O'Keefe made earlier. And to my surprise, uh, Ben O'Keefe, I have to give him that, the, the fact that he is, in fact, one of the best referees in the world, despite the fact that he has been noticeably slower in his decision-making, like, like noticeably more reluctant to give out penalties, his reluctancy is actually consistent throughout the entire game. Yeah, I actually can't complain about the decision because he's consistent. Even though it is slower than what you would expect from a referee. Let me show you. 
So this is the scrum that could have won the Reds of the game right here, right down here, right? Reds pushing forward. Balls just, the, 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 the scrum is a mess. The balls popped out of the back. The referee gave a lot of time for the ball to pop out uh, and then did not give out the penalty. Most referees would have given it before the ball even got to, to, the, to, the, to the half back there, right? So I was very unhappy. But from watching the game earlier, this was a scrum where the Brumbies could have got a penalty just in front of the Reds' try line. Again, the Brumbies, you can see that it's a five meter scrum and the Brumbies march forward like two, three meters at this point. And the, the referee did not call the penalty, allow the ball to get shifted out to Fraser McRide, allowing the Reds to exit. So, yeah, I actually can't complain. In fact, I'm going to say, Ben O'Keefe, uh, you did a great job and made the right call here. Because he is actually consistent, giving both teams opportunity to get the ball out so that he doesn't just issue a penalty, giving, I guess, the, the team that has the ball the slight advantage of being able to get the ball out uh, and not just blow out the penalty as quickly as possible. Yeah, so he's consistent, so I actually can't complain, despite the fact that, yes, it is slower than usual than what we're used to. But um, I guess that's probably something that they've been instructed to do in Super Rugby. Maybe something that World Rugby has instructed to give like teams that doesn't have a nearly a scrum uh, as a you know who doesn't have that scrum advantage an opportunity to at least recycle their own ball, not to just lose every scrum feed. Maybe that's the direction from from Super Rugby or World Rugby. But yeah, uh, Ben O'Keefe has been consistent, so. Yeah, thumbs up to Ben O'Keefe. And another big one, big call he made early in the game was the the, the penalty that allowed the Brumbies to take the lead. Uh, and it was a scrum. And this one went down and the Reds, lose their prop, had his elbow on the ground first. And that is very consistent to how scrums are being judged. Whoever has their arm down first will be penalized. Like when the scrum goes down at the same time, whoever's elbow touches first, it's a penalty against that person. That's just how it is. I know it is literally both props at fault and it's just a 50-50 call. And that is the deciding factor for the 50-50 call. Whoever's elbow touched the ground first is the one that gets, gets penalized. And yeah, the Reds did it for themselves. And uh, then there was a completely right decision there as well. And again, just big thumbs up to Ben O'Keefe for making that. Very difficult. A lot of referees probably caught a reset here. And there was a lot of resets as well. But he eventually made the right decision here with the, with the elbow to the ground there. Yeah. Uh, outside of scrummaging, I thought Tom Wright was absolutely amazing tonight. You know, I criticized Tom, Tom Wright a lot in the past for being a bit of a prima donna, being a bit of a cocky, showboying sort of person. Uh, you know, today, he scored two tries. Like, if it was, if it wasn't if it wasn't for Tom Wright, the Brumbies would have lost this game just taking on the line himself. And just single-handedly, you know, cutting through the defense and winning, getting that, getting that try it scored uh, for his team. I thought it was very, very impressive. And it didn't act like a cocky, cocky kid after scoring, pushing people around, throwing the ball around and stuff. So yeah, I showed a lot of maturity there as well. So I, I would have to just give Tom Wright uh, the recognition for the development that is he has shown, the, the, the maturity he has shown in this game as well. Uh, in terms of the kicking game, I thought it was a little bit flat for both teams. It was very there was a lot of like pointless kicking. It wasn't very strategic uh, for both teams at times. And finally, the set piece, the Reds had more dominance, uh, whereas the Brumbies more wasn't functioning as well. But they really didn't give them any opportunity to show that overall in this game. So yeah, uh, with that being said, let's have a look at some of the match stats of this game. Very disappointing for me. It's actually three tries again. A bit of it's glitched. If there's there's a penalty try, so it's a glitch. Um, so it's, it's actually three to two, 705 run meters to the Reds, 427 to the Brumbies and 27 defenders bid in for the Reds and still wasn't able to score tries. It shows maybe there's a little bit of fatigue out of the Reds team. Maybe there is a little bit of, um, yeah, a bit of a, um, bit of a pressure on them because they're playing against the Brumbies, not really able to execute a lot of their opportunities there. 14 turnovers conceded against the Reds, 10 against the Brumbies, 121 tackles for the Reds. 11 missed tackles, which is really world-class 
missed tackle count. The Brumbies, 146 tackles made, 27 missed tackles. Um, probably a B in terms of completion score. Now the kicks in play, 25 to 29. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty lackluster for both teams, in my opinion. And the big difference in the end of the day is the conversion. Yeah, it turns out missing a bunch of your penalties. There was uh there was a penalty missed pretty much right in front for uh for Liner. And I think one of the conversions wasn't that wasn't that hard either. And uh, I mean it's it's I mean, it's, it's it's a more try and it's not really that far out. Uh but uh yeah, the um I think Liner missed all of his conversions. The only convert oh wait the no he he got one i think the the penalties try didn't have to kick the conversion so yeah that's that's yeah that was proven to be the one point difference whereas no a lot of ceo kicked all his penalties including one that was like almost 50 meters out right near the sideline uh that was a very impressive kick uh, and that was just before half time i think yeah it was very very impressive very far distance and he was able to slot that one through line outs 14 for the reds Nine for the for the for the Brumbies. Two lineups lost for both teams. Scrum four for the Reds. Eight for the Brumbies. One scrum lost for the Brumbies. Like I said, it was pretty back and forth for the scrummaging. I thought the Reds had scrum dominance for the most part, but the Brumbies did have their dominance of their own in small brief periods as well. Eight penalties conceded for the Reds. Ten for the Brumbies, and one yellow card against the Brumbies for a um, what what, what was the penalty? Uh, Uh, oh yeah, for sacking the mall, uh, entering the mall from the side and sacking the mall right in front of the try line, and it was a penalty try. So yeah, that was uh, not ideal. But then yeah, the Brumbies still was able to pull themselves back into the game uh, with Tom Wright leading the charge. Yeah, very impressive performance by Tom Wright uh, today tonight. So yeah, let's recap the game. Two minutes into the game, the Reds was getting some very good scrum, scrum going, uh, some good offload for momentum. Uh, there was a nice little inside ball from Uru to Ravi, and Ravi like, like, like Uru made a bit of a break, and Ravi carried on with the break, and then he like threw the ball over the top to counter by Sami, who didn't ca who didn't get the ball, it went over his head, and then it was scooped up by Fluke, a Fluke pass from Ravi to Fluke, and uh, yes, Fluke goes in for the first try for the Reds, seven points to nil, only a minute on the clock. Twelve minutes into the game, the Bromby strikes back with. Tom Wright. Uh, so the Brumbies was able to use kind of like both width of the field. They went from, they, they used like the short side to get pretty close to the trial line and just swung the ball back to the open side. And Tom Wright got the ball. He just like, yeah, he just, he basically like ran sideways. Uh, and he had a, he was like two on two. So he ran sideways and it looked like he wanted to do like a switch. He wanted to draw both defenders together and then do a switch with his winger. But his winger didn't quite get what he was trying to do. And he just kind of stayed on the wing. And there was basically, there was no space left. And Tom Wright just like did the switch dummy. And then just powers himself straight through two defenders. And scored the first try. Yeah, that was very impressive. Just good leg drive. Uh, the winger wasn't reading what Tom Wright wanted to do. But uh, Tom Wright just like, all right, I'll just score it anyway myself. So really well done. Seven points to seven. Uh, Brombies got themselves score leveled 29 minutes into the game the reds had you know after putting a lot of pressures on the brumbies they had a lot of a number of penalties they went for the more they went for the crash ball um they had like you know tries denied uh brumbies had a try denied as well there was one where they had a more again a line or more uh the, the tight head prop cal Tai went over and it was knocked on just over the trial line so 29 minutes in the Reds, after numerous attempts, not able to get those penalty, get those morse going, they decided to finally take the three points. So this is probably like the first time they're taking the three points. Uh, I guess they have taken three points before, but this is probably the first time they're taking it when the scoreboard is so close. Like, no, that's, yeah, I, I, I feel like the Reds... Uh, anyway, I think this they, they're very rarely taking three points this season, let's just put it that way. So this was a bit of a surprise to me that they're, taking the, they're going for the three. Um, but I don't blame them. It was pretty tough out there. And uh, Lina missed. Yeah, so that was uh, that was a bit of a yikes. Uh, just before halftime, very tight. The Brumbies, like again, f almost 50 meters out near the sideline. Pretty big angle for a lot, not a lot of seal. And it kicked the penalties through to go into halftime. 10 points, 7 lead for the Brumbies. So yeah, that was very impressive by the lot, lot of seal. Uh, second half, 52 minutes in. There was 
a um the Brumbies was like attacking near the Reds trial line. There was a quick turnover. Like it this was like turnover on the Reds trial line, and the Reds decided to counterattack from that. <laughs> uh, and it worked. Um Jordan Pataya ran like 50 meters down the line, and then eventually the Reds got into the Brumbies 22, got a penalty. And instead of kicking for three, the Reds decided to go for the line out. And this time he paid off. They went to the line out, they went for the more penalty collapsing first time. They went for the line out again, went for the more penalty collapsing penalty try. Ben O'Keefe had enough. Uh, number 18 was sent off on the Brumbies. And uh, yeah, uh, 14 points to 10. The Reds taking the lead with a player uh, up advantage as well. A few minutes later, 56 minutes on the clock. Reds just again, same playbook. Penalty went for the line out. Line out more this time. Uh, the Brumbies did not collapse the more, but the Reds just just really executed perfectly. Nasa held onto the ball, uh, waited for the, you know, the, the more roll perfectly, and then he went over for the try. Just absolutely beautiful, beautiful play. 19 points to 10 for the Reds. And it was at this point looking like the Reds could just do the rolling more and put on a bunch of more tries and just, you know, call it a day. But now nah, the Brumbies fought themselves back in with 14 players on the field. Uh, Reds gave out some, uh, like one silly penalty. And now the Brumbies back into the 20 into the Reds 22, and again, Tom Wright just got the ball. Man, he just, like, taken on the line himself, found a bit of a gap, just punched himself through, and then it was pretty close to the trial line. So again, uh, it was just individual performance from Tom Wright after some, you know, after the Brumbies wasn't able to crash through, and uh, Tom Wright gets on the board with the player in the bin. 19 points to 17, 63 minutes, and then 68 minutes in the game. I just showed you already, scrum, penalty to... The Brumbies, uh, Noel Osio kicked that one, 19 points to the 20. And then with the clock counting down, the game kind of went into a bit of an overdrive. The Brumbies was trying to slow the game down with scrummaging. That was a, like the decision was very difficult for the referee. The scrum was collapsed a few times. Our uh, referee made a good effort to pause the clock every time, which I think should be how you go, how, how they do all the scrummaging. After the first scrum, every reset should just be with the clock paused uh, to save time. And uh, yeah, the, the scrummaging eventually was, there was a, a 77 minutes, sorry, 77 minutes. Eventually the Red, after numerous resets, the Reds did get a scrum penalty. They went for the line out. And uh, at this point, the Reds was pretty much in kicking range. And I thought the thing that Reds, I don't know what's going on with the Reds. I mean, the, the reserve halfback didn't really feel like he knew where the game needed to be going at this point. It, because the Reds kept on working the shore side. And this was like 40 meters out. So if you get a penalty, Lionel's not going to be able to kick this. It's way too much of an angle, way too far out. You need to be center field to try to get the penalty. And they just kept going the short side. I was getting really frustrated. Like, I'm just like, just go to the open, spread about for open, spread the ball out open. And they kept going the short side and the Brumbies rush defense was just actually pushing the Reds back and eventually forced a knock on. Yeah, uh, scrum time, Reds big scrum, big push. Like I said, initially I thought there should have been a penalty already, but looking back, Ben O'Keefe was consistent, so no penalty, fine, fair enough. And uh, the, I mean, the Reds, like I said, they, they had the opportunity to get a penalty before knocking the ball on. It's purely up to them to, 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 got, to get that and really can't blame the referee on this. And finally, um, the Reds, uh, the, the Brumbies ran the clock down and won the game by one point away at Suncorp Stadium, which is very impressive. 19 points to 20. So yeah, a little bit of work for the Reds. Uh, Lionel needs to get back on this kicking practice, I guess. Could have made a massive difference if he had landed uh, just one out of the two missed uh, penalties slash conversions. Would have been, uh, yeah, would have been, would have been much, much, would have been, would have been a win for the Reds. So yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. And let me know your thoughts about Ben O'Keefe's performance tonight and, uh, and those scrum calls. Uh, check out the store. And thanks to anyone who donates money and some supports me financially. Do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, have a good one, guys. See you guys next week for the news. Cheers.